Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today we are talking about the latest studio album from Obituary entitled Dying of Everything. This is the 11th studio album from American Floridian uh, death metal icons and pioneers obituary alongside the likes of Cannibal Corpse, Morbid Angel, Suffocation, and Death. Obituary have uh, done a lot to define the sound and the attitude of classic old-school death metal. Early records like Slowly We Rot, Cause of Death, The End Complete remain iconic, exhilarating, exciting, incredibly influential, incredibly important. And though Obituary had some troubles in the late 90s and would have these off and on periods throughout the 2000s, they've pretty much been firing on all cylinders since 2014's Inked in Blood. Uh, 2017's self-titled album Obituary in particular, I would argue is on par with the aforementioned Slowly Rot and Cause of Death. That album did such a great job at bringing together a slew of elements from across Obituary's discography into something that was tight, punchy, memorable, brutal, incredibly well produced, very easy to digest and process, uh, clocking in at like just barely over 30 minutes long. Yes, it was arguably somewhat meat and potatoes, but it was meat and potatoes prepared and served with the kind of love and care and attention to detail that my grandma would, would uh, make and serve dinner with. Like, it's literally the best possible meatloaf and mashed potatoes with gravy imaginable, just in sonic form. And also, I guess in this scenario, obituary are my grandmas. And I have five grandmas. What the fuck? Yeah, this analogy got away from me. I'm not sure how, since it's such a simple one. Anyways, the point is, it was a damn great record. And uh, Dying of Everything, more or less the same. I will say right off the bat, I do not think it is as strong as the self-titled album. Uh, it does hurt from being a slightly longer record. I, I think Obituary have typically been at their best when they're writing shorter records within the 30 to 35 minute kind of time frame. I would also say that generally speaking, the riffs do feel a little bit more repetitive and a little bit more blasé, you know? Like, there's not really a, a whole lot of urgency to the, the songwriting. There's not really a whole lot of uh, uh, really fresh and intuitive shit going on here. To put it very simply, even by the standards of meat and potatoes death metal, this is very meat and potatoes. But you know what, whatever. I love my five grandmas, and they're still doing a pretty good job with aforementioned meat and potatoes. There's still a little bit of a juice in the box, still a little bit of a gas in the tank. They're doing their best, and they're coming out more or less on top. The music is fierce, straight to the point, groovy, fast, punchy. Uh, much like the self-titled record, there are some other little... Uh, twists and turns, some uh, subtle little spices to be found all through. The closing track, Be Worn, for instance, kind of feels like Obituary's take on Death Tomb with a lot of oppressive, battering, sludgy rhythms and drawls. The title track, Dying of Everything as well, throws in some bloodthirsty metallic triplets that wouldn't be out of place on a more recent Slayer record. It even throws in some kind of ominous chanting spoken word vocals. It almost sounds like somebody reading from like an ancient text like the Necronomicon or some bullshit like that. Tracks like Barely Alive, Weaponize the Hate, just gloriously, deliciously, over-the-top brutal goodness. I mean, it's, it's everything you really want from a really, really ultra-aggressive, violent death metal rager. Mind you, none of this is brand new to the obituary sound, to the obituary uh, aesthetic, but the way it's implemented here on Dying of Everything, you know, it, it feels just fresh enough, you know? And just in case that is somehow, you know, <laughs> too wacky, too left field for you, uh, there are some like really straightforward classic obituary style bangers on here. The Wrong Time and My Will to Live, for instance, which easily could have been on any of the last few obituary records, you know? They're stark, they're vicious. I gotta say, John Tardy sounds really great across this record. Like, he, he's really giving it his fucking all, just screeching and screaming and yelling his guts out. Like, if you told me that somebody had put a gun to this man's head and said, if you don't fucking give it your all, you're done, I'd believe you, because he gives it his motherfucking all as if his life depends on it. I'd say the biggest issue with this album is there's a, a surprisingly large stockpile of like really rudimentary 
death metal riffery, you know? It's, it's well done, it's sharp, it works, but like, I can't help wishing that I had something just a little bit more dynamic, especially when the self-titled actually had that. Like, there were a bunch more grooves and like a bunch more weirdly bluesy licks to be found across that thing. This thing, I think, plays things a little bit safer, uh, uh, riff-wise, like in the, in the guitar music department. Again, it's not bad. I'm still banging my head. I'm still having fun. But, you know, coming hot off the heels of a year that was really great for old school death metal, you know, with banging records from Undeaf, Ripped to Shreds, and so many more, I can't help but kind of wish for something just a little bit more from Obituary. I mean, even their contemporaries in, in Cannibal Corpse, you know, are, are constantly pushing themselves to new technical and sonic extremes. Personally, for me, this is a 3.5 out of 5. This is not a perfect record. It is definitely a very predictable record. But it's authentic, it's mean, it's nasty, it's gnarly, and uh, while not being the most dynamic in the riff department, it is, you know, brutal. It, it gets the job done, and, you know, at the end of the day, so long as a death metal record is able to be those things and do those things, that's really all that matters. If you genuinely despised Obituary, especially these more recent records like Inked in Blood and the self-titled, there's nothing on here that would change your mind whatsoever. And on the flip side, if you are brand new to Obituary, I can understand why you may not care for this uh, the same way you might care for some other, you know, newer bands that are playing the old school style of death metal, frankly, with, with way more flavor and versatility. This really is there for the old guard of, like, obituary diehard fans and metalheads that have been there since day one. Like, the motherfuckers that bought Cause of Death and Slowly We Rot when they came out on, like, vinyl and, and cassette and CD and shit like that. And you know what? More power to those motherfuckers, because those are the ones keeping obituary in business all these years later. So, yeah. Overall, once again, uh, a bit of a step down from the self-titled, uh, but still a damn good record, all things considered. Wouldn't change your mind if you were just totally, totally done with Obituary, but fuck it. If that were the case, you wouldn't even be watching this video. 3.5 out of 5. It's good. I enjoyed it. It's not going to win any awards or anything, but it's, it's fun. And I think that my five Floridian grandmas did a very good job. Great job. Great job all around. Round of applause. You don't have to go to the nursing home just yet. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? Thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown -y fucking immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.